Hi, I'm Zach Murdoch, the local government reporter here at the Herald Tribune, and thanks for watching our City Candidate Series as part of our 2017 Voter Guide to the Sarasota City Election. Uh, I'm here today with longtime neighborhood leader and former planning board member Jennifer Ahern Koch, and I'd like to just launch right into a first question for you because because you're a co-founder of this group called Stop. And over the last few months, you've talked at length about a process known as administrative review under which city planners are required, basically, to approve downtown developments that meet the existing code. And you've argued that there should be more public input on that. And so I'd like to ask you specifically in what circumstances you want that kind of public input at the Planning Board and City Commission. Yes, okay, so the way the city used to, to do this process was um, they, it was citywide and there was public input citywide. And then 14 years ago they instituted this administrative review, you call it, I still call it administrative approval because words count, words matter. And what they're doing is not reviewing a project, they're actually reviewing it and then approving it. So if they were just reviewing it, that would be one thing, but they're not. They're reviewing a project and then approving it. So I will call it administrative approval, um, even though it is referred to in the zoning code as administrative review. Yeah. So um, we have this administrative approval process in the downtown of the city of Sarasota. And aside from things that are uh, very common that we're used to dealing with administratively, like single family homes, additions, I believe it's multifamily units of six units or less, um, we have the public input in most projects, uh, especially the ones that impact the community. Projects like The View, where you have these super blocks with these super projects that at a key intersection of our city where we have had no public input, and I mean no public input from the community or from the public via their elected officials. Mm -hmm. So the city commissioners. The city commissioners did, ha did not have any input for example, on the view, I hate to keep picking on the view, but it is our poster child. And so you would, you would like major downtown development projects of a certain size, maybe, to always have planning board and city commission review? I would like the way it is in the city of Sarasota now, on the outskirts of the city of Sarasota, where you have a mix of administrative approval and the public process, I would like that to be citywide. Mm -hmm. So the way it is in my neighborhood, I would like that to be citywide. Gotcha. I would also like us to consider um, intensity. So a project doesn't have to be big or massive like the view to have an impact on a community. Um, you can have a 7-Eleven, you can have a gas station. And if it's right on the border, right on the fringe of a neighborhood, a single family, single story neighborhood, maybe it's on a substandard street that doesn't see very much traffic. If you mm -hmm. all of a sudden put a very intense project there, that could negatively impact a neighborhood. Yeah. Even though the building itself will be 2,000 square feet or 1,500 square feet yeah. or 3,000 square feet, it could still have a real negative impact on a neighborhood. So I want us to look at how we, the thresholds that trigger yeah. administrative approval and public process. So I think those f need to be re-examined. Well, speaking of development, uh, at a lot of the candidate forums recently, we've talked so much about the huge billion dollar boom, so to speak, downtown, and whether that's good or bad. But what I really want to know is, it, the fact is that development is happening. It's underway. Mm -hmm, sure. So how does the city commission balance what's happening now with this long history and kind of idyllic vision of Sarasota as a small town? Yeah, that's a very good question. And I think that's, that's one of the things that we as a community have to em embrace right away. That is one of the key difficulties right now is that we as a community don't know what has been approved. I mean, we know it if you go on the website and you have the maps of the downtown and you see the northern part, the central part, and the southern part. You put them all together and you look at them. It's two-dimensional. You have like a little dot or a little square. And they have a little picture or drawing of what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. That still does not give us a real picture of what our downtown is going to look like with all of these buildings mm -hmm. built. Some of them have a little uh, orange square on there and it's not going to be a very intense project. Mm -hmm. right but it covers a lot of space some of them are small properties but you're going to have an 18-story building built lot line to lot line so mm -hmm. it would help i think a lot of times if we had a real picture in our mind of what our downtown is going to look like after this is all happening so it's it it's dealing with what we have now and then at some point in time saying let's 
look and evaluate these projects because we do brag about Sarasota being a small community or an urban community with neighborhood amenities. Mm -hmm. And so we really need to keep that. We need to capture that and we need to keep that. When you have the city of Sarasota and you're walking around and you go to Burns Court, right, or you go mm -hmm. to Towles Court, whenever I take tourists there, visitors there, right? They're in awe that you have these special little corners of our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You go to the historic Laurel Park neighborhood, right? Yep. Then you go to Gillespie Park, you know? And so we have these gems throughout our city and we have to be careful when we're growing that what we're not doing is we're not edging out those gems. Mm -hmm. Newtown just had a celebration on Saturday about historic Newtown and they're having these place markers, right? Mm -hmm. To sort of substantiate and celebrate Newtown's history. We need to embrace that. We need to bring that to the same level as any other development in our community. We need to mm -hmm. recognize, appreciate, and protect our neighborhood because that's a value, right? Mm -hmm. That's a huge value to the city of Sarasota, just as much as any other piece of the puzzle. So it's all about balancing all of that, protecting it, and, and keeping that. And you can do that by keeping the community involved, mm -hmm. by keeping the public involved. You have to know what the public wants in their community. Mm -hmm. And if you cut them out, you won't know that. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's really important that we have the public process in our city. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, let me ask you one last question about another just enormous topic in the city. It's, it's about homelessness. Right. And what I'm interested to hear from you is that over the last year, the city and the county and nonprofits have made a lot of progress mm -hmm. together, but there still seems to be a struggle to get everyone rowing in the same direction and on the same page about what needs to happen next. So my question to you okay. is, what does the city need to do to help push this thing to the next level? And what's the city's role in the whole spectrum uh, of ways that we need to combat homelessness in the community? Yeah, um, I, I actually will um, slightly disagree with you. Um, because I do think that the city is moving forward and partnering well with the county and with the organization. So we've just hired that um, uh, consultant, Susan mm -hmm. Porchot, and what she's going to do is to evaluate all of these different organizations and how they fit into a network mm -hmm. that will continue with our housing first effort. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe the county and the city are working together, are talking about working together on the homeless issue under the model that is a, um, a, a state and federal model that is already a policy that they back. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you have the state and the federal government and then you have the county and the city working together on this housing first model, I think we're already moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to evaluate all of the services so that we can see where they overlap mm -hmm. and we can see where the holes are missing and then we can really go forward with instituting housing first. So we've already started, like you said, mm -hmm. um, and I think there, the focus was on um, families and children yep. and veterans and now we need to take it to the next level. And I, I think there's a lot of momentum and support uh, from the county, from the state and from the federal government to continue on this model. Sure. It's a proven successful model. So The question then becomes, and the elephant in the room is about a comprehensive emergency services shelter and whether that's an expansion of the Salvation Army or a new facility itself. And I hear you talking about housing first, but he still intends to try to address the shelter question. Well, um, my understanding is that standalone shelters are not funded anymore by the state and by the federal government. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong on that, but when you have the state and the federal government backing a policy of housing first, and you have evidence and proof and data that shows that it has a success rate of 85%. I think we, I mentioned that mm -hmm. I read a study in Utah where they um, had a 91% success rate in the mm -hmm. state of Utah with housing first. They had another model before and they adopted the housing first model and it's been 91% successful. Mm -hmm. So when you have a policy that's backed by the state and by the federal government, then I think that you're looking at uh, a good step to a solution and um, shelters are a part process, but I think a standalone shelter mm -hmm. is, I could be wrong, but I think a standalone shelter is not the policy of the state mm -hmm. or the federal government anymore. Interesting, interesting. Well, thank you for joining us and talking That's through some complicated <laughs> issues. We appreciate it as always, and uh, the election is March 14th.